Portia, welcome. We are so glad you're here. How are we today, friends? Woo! Woo! You feeling good? Yes. If this is your first time when you came in, or if it's your, like, I don't know how many Sundays we've had as Refresh Church, but if it's that number, you got a connect card when you came in. We would love for you to fill that out. It was awesome last Sunday after Easter Sunday. Our team got to just pray over a lot of cards because y'all finally filled them out. We don't want, like, five. We want whatever's in here. So yes. um, we would love to fill you your first time we're not going to show up at your house we just want to send you kind of a welcome email get to know us at refresh so yeah love it we'd love to get to know who you are and um if you're new we also have a welcome center out in the lobby we like to invite you to come say hello we've got a gift for you um any questions you have we'd love to connect with you we have so many things coming up here at refresh yes. and we are so 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 excited so the first one that we have coming up is we have Easter, or Easter. <laughs> we we Easter already had Easter. We have baptism. Yes. Baptisms are coming up <laughs> next Sunday. And if you or someone you know would like to get baptized, we have some info at the Welcome Center out in the lobby. And we invite you to join us for that. And it'll be after service on Sunday. Yep. It'll be a celebration of what God's doing and life change. If you've said yes to Jesus, all it is is telling the people around you like, yes, I'm going to follow Jesus. So we are so excited to celebrate that. Yes. And this summer, we have our first summer camp coming up for our students. My girls are super pumped for that. Yes. So um, you can check. We have an awesome youth booth if you go out to the left. Woo, the shout kids out are to hanging youth out. Um, I think the youth activity is roller skating, which I'm totally yeah. crashing that today to go roller skating and living my childhood dreams out again. But <laughs> anyways, um, if you still Easter with us. We, it was an awesome Sunday. It was so good. And this so week good. I was reading something that I shared on Instagram and it basically the gist of it was like, hey, what happened on Sunday, resurrection, don't let the devil try to take that from you. Because I know Monday morning we still woke up to the same financial hardships or marriage issues or relationship difficulties or whatever it is. Sunday was so celebratory. And um, Angela, who is one of our awesome small group leaders, messaged me and she said, you know, I was thinking about Elijah. And if you want to read the story, it's in 1 Kings 18. And basically, Elijah had one of the greatest victories as a prophet. Yeah. He went out and said to the prophets of Baal, make your sacrifice. If your God is real, he will consume this but then I'll do mine. And if my God responds, he is the true God. And of course, yeah. like he prayed and God consumed all of it. But the very next part is Elijah at one of his absolute lowest, like, God, I just want to die. And I think sometimes when we have a high like that, the devil kinds of come in and bring down the rest of the week. Yeah. And today, let's not let him do that. Um, yeah. Portia, do you want to pray us as we That's get ready so for a time of worship? Yeah, thank you. And so as we continue in worship, will you guys just pray with me? Um, God, I just praise you, Lord. I praise you that God in the highs and the lows, God, you are the same yesterday, yes. today, forever. God, I just praise you that you are working constantly. God, you are so good. God, we have so many reasons just to praise you. And I just pray, Lord, that as we come and we worship you, God, that you are glorified in this place, that your spirit is felt, that your presence is known, that we are refreshed by who you are, God, this morning. And so we are just delighted to be in your presence and to share this morning with you, Lord. Thank you and we praise you in your name, amen. amen.
Let's praise Him. Let's praise Him, church. Let's go. Come on, put our hands together. Let's lift Him up a little bit. Let's celebrate the resurrected Savior. We have a reason to praise, don't we? Woo! Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, when you came in, you would have gotten um, some elements for communion today. If you didn't, uh, we got a great serve team. I'm sure that they would love to put some in your hands. And so if you want to maybe give them a quick wave as they walk down the aisles and whatnot. Yeah, here they are. You can just go ahead and snag that one from them. Uh, my name is TJ, pastor here at Refresh. And today we're going to take communion together. And communion is when we remember the cross. And last week, we Easter, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus. And uh, so today, this is our way of remembering. And that that Thursday night before Jesus was arrested and crucified, he gathered his disciples around a table and he took some bread and he broke it and he handed it around. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. And so together, we're gonna do that. Father, this broken body, we remember the brokenness of your body and what it accomplished for us. It brought us healing. It brought us grace. It brought us new life. And so today, as we hold this bread, we remember. We well remember the things that you've done in our life, the things that you are continuing to do in our life. Let's take the bread together and eat. In the same way he took the cup, And he passed it around and he said, this is my blood which is shed for you, take drink. Then often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So we are remembering the blood that was shed on our behalf. The Bible tells us that without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness. And Jesus was that sacrifice once and for all, for all of us. And so today we remember, we well remember that he has paid it all that the words he said on the cross, it is finished, are still true today, that it is still finished, that sin has been redeemed, that we are forgiven, and we celebrate, we celebrate the resurrection because of that. So Father, we come before you now remembering, remembering the blood that was shed for us that brings about forgiveness. And as believers, may we walk in that forgiveness, live in that forgiveness, think in that forgiveness, and live out our lives as sons and daughters of the King. Let's take the cup together and drink. Father, we thank you for this moment, for this church, for this time, for this season. We thank you, Lord, for the, the grace you bestowed upon us, that you gave us this new life. And I pray that we would use this life well to honor you, to build your kingdom, to see you at work in all things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's praise him a little more. Come on, church, let's lift our voice. celebrate one more time. Let's celebrate the resurrection one more time. Let's lift our voice and praise him one more time. Hey, hey, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, well, do me a favor, church. Turn to your neighbor, give him a big high five and say, you sang really well this morning. Some of you guys just lied in church. <laughs> they were not singing good, Pastor. And I had a choice. I could be obedient or I could lie, and I didn't know what to do. 
<laughs> oh, man, I bet the person next to you was making at least a joyful noise, right? So when you came in, you would have gotten one of these. This is what we call our Connect card. Do me a favor, at some point in the service, fill this out. We'll be praying for you this week. Uh, praying over your name. If you don't have a prayer request, that's fine. Uh, just write it on there. Let us know you're here and so that we'll be praying with you. Um, and if we've never met, my name's TJ. I'll be in the lobby after service. I'd love to shake your hand, find out how you found out about Refresh Church, how we can uh, serve you and your family, grow in your relationship with God. Uh, last week was a kind of a big deal. Anybody remember last week? <laughs> Easter, man. So great. And last week we did a spiritual survey. I gave A, B, C, D as the options. You guys remember that? You guys are like, okay, I think so. Okay, I wasn't, you weren't paying attention. That's okay. I got you. I'll put them on the screen, okay? Uh, let's go. Let's put these on the screen. A, B, C, D. Or, yeah, nope, not going to happen. I'll do it myself. Okay. Uh, a, <laughs> A, this is the survey we did. A is I'm already in a relationship with Jesus. Lots and lots and lots of people put A on their Connect card, and they're like, I'm serving Jesus. I'm loving Jesus. I'm growing in my life in my relationship with Jesus. That was great, right? B is I'm beginning a real relationship with Jesus. That means there were people in the room that selected B and they were starting a relationship with Jesus that day. And there were 13 people in this room that did that. Isn't that amazing? Come on. Like there's a reason to praise. That's a big deal. Over in our kids department, we had like over a hundred, like, like 140 or something kids back there uh, doing incredible things with our kids teams. They're just the best team in the world. Um, there were 10 kids that made a decision to follow Jesus last week as well. Isn't that awesome? I love that. God is doing great, great things. Um, C is the next one. Uh, considering it a bit more, they, they say, I, I'm, not, I'm not a Christian, but I'm thinking about it. I, want, I have some questions or some things. Uh, I, I need a little, little more time. There were four people that responded to that. They're, 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 we're praying for them, right? Come on. And then D, the last one, was don't intend to make that decision. Uh, that, that's like, they, I don't plan on becoming a Christian. I'm just here because my mom made me come or whatever. Uh, I, I, if you were in the services, I like dared people to write that. Like, I dare you. I'm going to pray for you. I, I dare you over the next year and zero people put D. So I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I tried my best, church. I tried my best. Um, so we need to go out there in the world. We need to find some people uh, that we need to reach for Jesus. Amen. So it, last week we kicked this off. You guys can go ahead and take that off the screen. Um, this, this series that we're in called Believe It or Not, we kicked it off last week. Um, and the whole premise of the series is to increase your faith by talking about miracles that happened in the Bible. And last week there was a pretty big one. The resurrection of Jesus. That's a big deal, right? In fact, the entire Christian faith is built upon this single moment that the resurrection happened, believe it or not. And whether you believe it or not doesn't really dictate whether or not it happened. It happened, whether you believe it or not. And this whole series is designed to teach you about some of the miracles that happened post-resurrection that we can learn lessons from and, believe it or not, increase your faith, if you believe. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna dive into some believe it or not scenarios. All right. Any foodies in the house? Come on. If I don't have a food illustration in this sermon, we're like, I got to go at least every other week on one, okay? Like, it just, food is good, amen? God created it. It's like, yes. It's one of those joys in life. Have you, who likes weird food combinations though? Like, there's some things out there that you're like, ain't nobody else like this, but I do. You got some weird taste buds? Okay. Um, how many of you guys grew up, you put salt on your watermelon? Yeah, there's a lot of people that are like, that's disgusting. Well, guess what? It's delicious. It's delicious. You should try it. It's like dipping, um, dipping your French fry into a Frosty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're having revival today. Okay, I can feel it. You guys, are, woo, you guys are on, you're on it. Okay. Oh. Chocolate drizzle on potato chips. Yes. No, okay. Black beans in brownies. Yes. <laughs> you guys are like, you're losing me. You're losing me. 
Too far? Too much. Okay. Too much fiber. We do not need that in a brownie. Why ruin a perfectly good brownie with black beans? I'm trying to get you protein, guys. Okay. It's delicious. You should. You, uh, here's, here's my personal favorite. I like this. Peanut butter on a hamburger. Who's ever had one of those? It's so weird. It is delicious. The only thing better than that is a fried egg on a hamburger. Revival. It's happening. Okay. Weird things. And some of you guys are going, I don't believe it. <laughs> There's no way peanut butter on a hamburger could possibly be good. But I'm telling you right now, it's delicious. Believe it or not. There's a lot of things in life, though, that you'll never believe until you experience. And that one experience could change the way you look at things from then on. Uh, I gave the illustration last week. It was snowing. It was like 45 degrees. And the snow is falling. It's melting as soon as it hits. And someone was like, that's not possible. And it's like, well, it's happening. Whether you believe it or not, here it is. And, and the same is true in our life. There's like this, an ounce of experience is better than like a, a pound of theory, right? Like once you experience something, it changes your perspective on something. Like you, you could theorize, ah, you know, there's, there's no way that that Jesus guy could change my life. There's no way that attending, going to a high school, setting everything up, singing a couple songs, listening to someone talking about the Bible could do anything in someone's life until you experience it, right? Experience changes everything. But what's interesting about the story we started off with last week, the story of Thomas and his doubt, was that his experience changed everything. But then Jesus says something very profound. He says, you believe because you saw, but blessed are those who believe even without seeing. He says, if, if you want to be extra, you want to be blessed, you want to walk in happiness and joy and fruitfulness, start to believe even before you see and see what happens. Experience is great. I, I think experience is great, don't you? But what about we just take God at his word? Believe even before we see. There's more joy there than anything else. Now, if you're the kind of person that's, you're like, might as well be from Missouri because you got to show me. <laughs> Old people got that joke. If you're younger, you're like, I don't even know what he's talking about. It's on their license plate. It's the show me state. Nobody else got it. Okay, that's fine. Just trying to make it fun for you guys. Just go ahead. You got, you're, you're like, you got to show me. I got to have the experience. I got to see it happen. I got to have it for myself. That's great. I don't think God's afraid of your questions. I don't, I don't think he's afraid of that. But blessed are those who believe even before they see. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to dive in to the very last chapter of the book of John. And let me summarize this miracle real quick. Um, Peter and some of the disciples go fishing. Um, they're catching nothing. There's a man on the shore who happens to be Jesus, but they don't know it's Jesus. This is after the resurrection. He says, why don't you throw your nets on the other side? They throw the nets on the other side of the boat. Miracle catch a fish. They realize there's only one person that could do that, Jesus. And so they come to the shore and there's Jesus and they have this conversation, right? The miracle is what? The catch a fish. It's a, mir it's a miracle. Like they caught nothing. And I don't know how wide their boat is, but it's probably not super wide. Even if it was like a really, really big boat, the odds of catching fish on one side and not the other, very small. <laughs> like I've, I've fished a lot in my life. And they're throwing these nets down. I mean, the fact that one side had fish and the other didn't is a miracle by itself because Jesus said, hey, just put them on the other side. Why they listen to him? I don't know. <laughs> Somebody was yelling at me from the shore, why don't you put your nets on the other side? I'd be like, all right, heckler. <laughs> I'm good. I'm already having a bad night because I didn't catch any fish and here you are. Okay. But they did it. But the miracle of catching the multitude of fish is only a small piece of the bigger miracle that's actually happening in this moment. And, and so today what I want to do is I want to take this miracle and I hope that by adding some context to it, there can be a revelation in your life of what God is doing on a greater level. Because the miracle of the catch of fish we have heard, maybe if you grew up in Sunday school, if you've read your Bible, but did we know that it's a part of a much larger story of what's happening in one person's life and that person is named Peter. So I'm going to start this story of the catch of fish, the miracle, but I'm going to break it down and I'm going to go to, we're going to have like, we're going to do like a movie where we're going to have flashbacks, okay? 
I'm going to read a little bit. We're going to flash back to a previous event. And we're going to go back into the present time. And we're going to read the story. And we're going to flash back again. Can you guys follow me through this? Everybody say yes. yes. I will not confuse you. Okay, I promise. But we're going to jump around in time a little bit. So this story starts, Jesus has already died, risen again, and appeared to the disciples twice. This is the third appearance of Jesus. We're going to flash back to before Jesus was crucified, to when he was walking and talking with the disciples at various points, and then shortly after the resurrection as well, we're going to fl- jump around a little bit. So I don't want to confuse anybody, but we're going to, we're going to have like flashback Fridays and all that kind of stuff, okay? Uh, John chapter 21 says this, Several of the disciples were there, Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel, Nathaniel from Canaan in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, which were John's and James, and two other disciples. Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out on the boat, and they caught nothing all night long. Time out. Before Peter was a disciple, do you know what his profession was? He was a fisherman. So when he says, I'm going fishing, he's not like me when I say I'm going fishing. Because when I say I'm going fishing, I'm going for fun. I'm going for relaxation. I'm going out to get in the woods, to be near a stream or a river or a lake or something. For me, it's recreation. For Peter, it means something different. Fishing was not just for fun. Fishing was his profession. Think about that for a minute. They've seen Jesus twice. They haven't seen him again. They're like, okay, well, back to business as usual, I guess. That was just a a couple year detour from our everyday normal life. We had this extraordinary experience and now it's like, well, I guess got to go back. So he says, I'm going fishing. And why did he think he should go back fishing? Why, Why would he think that that's the option? After seeing the resurrected Jesus, why would he say, that's great, but that's not for me? It's not that he didn't believe Jesus was alive, but why would he go back to an old life when that new life was so incredibly profound? Well, if you remember the events of the cross, we know that Peter had this separation from Jesus because he denied him, right? We remember that. Jesus told him, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter did. He denied Jesus three times. Peter felt as though he were no longer worthy to be a disciple. He had disqualified himself from following God. That the things he had done denying Jesus were so severe that there was no way that God could use him any longer. So go on fishing. I I have to. I'm not a disciple anymore, obviously. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do the thing I know how to do. I'm going to go fishing. Look at this passage. We're going to go back to right where the resurrection occurred, Mark chapter 16. It's at the empty tomb. An angel appears to the women who were there. But the angel said, don't be alarmed. Angels always have to say that. (laughs) Have you noticed that in the Bible? They're like, don't be scared. (laughs) Just stay calm. If an angel appeared to me, he'd have to say that to me too. How about you guys? They'd be like, thanks for saying that. I was getting nervous. Okay, (laughs) so don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter. Why, why Why did the angel have to say to the women, hey, get the disciples, and then add the phrase, including Peter. Wouldn't, if Peter were a disciple, wouldn't just go get the disciples have been enough? Peter was obviously one of the disciples. In fact, he was one of Jesus's closest three disciples. Peter was the one that got out of the boat and walked on water with Jesus. Peter was the one doing all kinds of incredible things in the name of Jesus. But at this point, in this moment, right after the resurrection, the angel has to clarify that, including Peter, because Peter was not a part of the disciple group. He had had taken himself out. He had lived himself out. He had denied Christ. It wasn't even God's choice. Peter just said, I guess I'm not in. 
I've done something so severe. It wasn't God pushing him out. He was choosing based on his own actions to say, well, I guess there's no coming back from that one. You ever feel that before? You ever do something and you're like, well, no coming back from that one. I, I, I'll, I'll never be used by God because, well, I mean, I could follow him from a distance, but it's better if I'm fishing instead of preaching. That's what Peter was thinking. And so the angel had to clarify, man, you, <laughs> Mary, go get the disciples. Go tell the disciples what happened here, what you saw, including Peter. You got to tell him because he's not out. This is an incredible act of grace right here that is on display. And we almost always miss it when we read because Peter's like, I, I don't count. I'm not in. But the angel has to say, no, 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 you're in. All right, back to fishing, back to John 21. That was our flashback. So Peter's like, I'm out, I'm fishing. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? If somebody asks you, you don't, if you've caught any fish and you're a fisherman, and the answer is no. What do you want to do? You're, you want to lie. <laughs> and then they ask, well, how big? And, you're, and again, <laughs> you're like, just never believe a fisherman, okay? Just, and this is speaking as one. <laughs> How'd it go? Slayed it, right? Like, oh, how many? All of them. Got them all. All of them. They're big ones? All of the big ones too. Little, all of them. Got them all, right? What was your biggest one? I don't know probably about that big. You're like, you fished a creek for trout. It was a big trout and a small, like, they want to lie. <laughs> but they say no, probably a little defeated. I've been there fishing a beach somewhere and they're like, catch anything? No. <laughs> Thanks for asking. No, they replied. He said, throw your net on the right hand side of the boat. You've been fishing on the left the whole time. It's wrong. Got to go to the right hand side and you'll get some. So they did. And they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish. Then the disciple that Jesus loved, that's John, he refers to himself that way, sort of in a third person. He said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic for he had stripped for work and jumped into the water and headed to the shore. Now, why was Peter so extremely excited at the presence of Jesus. One, it's Jesus, obviously. Two, he had been dead, buried, and resurrected. This was the third time he was appearing to the disciples. That's a pretty exciting moment. But why didn't all of them jump out of the boat? Well, why didn't, why didn't all of them go, all right, well, forget the fish. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going to get back. I got to get over there. Why? Why only Peter have that kind of reaction? It's because Peter's history with Jesus was different than all of their history with Jesus. You guys ready to flash back again? Okay, let's, let's flash back. Luke chapter five. One day Jesus is teaching on the shore and there's so many people crowding around that he gets in a boat and he pushes off from shore a little bit and, and the crowds are on the beach and he's on a boat teaching them so, that, so he can have a little space so that everybody can see him. And after the, 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 the crowd had dispersed, we pick it up here. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Simon is Peter, now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. Does it sound familiar? Sound, sound a little familiar to you guys? Okay. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish on the verge of sinking. And when Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the son of Zebedee, were also amazed. And Jesus replied to Simon, and this is the significant moment. This is the moment that I think got Peter to jump out of that boat and head to shore. Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, he left everything to follow Jesus. Think about that for a minute. 
the disciple Peter, no longer a disciple, going back to his old life, going back to fishing. He started off as a fisherman listening to Jesus to put the nets down one more time. There's a miracle catch of fish, and he's called into the discipleship or to the ministry of following Jesus and being a fisher of men. Now, you play that out a couple years. He denies Christ. He disqualifies himself as a disciple. He goes fishing again, back to his old life. And Jesus again shows up. And Jesus again gets the miracle catch of fish. And Peter knows what's next. No longer am I just a fisherman. He knows that the calling is next. He knows that he's not just a fisherman any longer. Even though he thought he was disqualified, Jesus came and met him where he was. Jesus spoke to him in the same way he spoke to him before. He showed him the same things he showed him before so that he could see that he's been redeemed like he was redeemed before. In your life, there will be moments and instances where there are seasons where you feel so far away from God that you have to go back every once in a while and you have to see that the miracle that happened in your life once before, the miracle of salvation is still in action today. That his, there's no limit on his grace. You can't run out of his grace. You can't go beyond his grace. His grace is always greater. And I think there are times where God has to speak to our soul and say, remember, Remember what I did. Go back to the days that you first fell in love with me. Go back to those things. And then you will see the world through a totally different lens. We might get lost in between. We might wander in between, but Jesus is still calling you. You may deny Christ. You may move on from Christ. You may do things that separate you from him. But every time, it doesn't matter as far as you run, when you turn around, he'll be there. And Jesus went and found Peter. Even though Peter went back to his old life, he went and found Peter and he said, no, you're not done. This this story's not over for you. You were once a fisherman, but that's not the life for you. You're gonna be a fisher of men. So he calls him back. And that's why Peter, that's why Peter was like, I'm jumping out this boat, man. I gotta get there faster. And so The others stayed in the boat. This is John 21 continued. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore for they were only about a hundred yards from the shore. And when they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore and there were 153 large fish yet the net hadn't torn. Now, you have to put yourself in Peter's shoes here for a minute, right? Or probably sandals. He probably wasn't wearing shoes. (laughs) It's funny. Thanks, TJ, for, for that. But you have to be in this incredibly excited, confused moment. Maybe you're like that here this morning. You're like, I don't I've been separated from God. I don't have a great relationship with God. I don't really even know God that well, but I know that he's real. I think Peter's sitting on the beach going, what on earth is this? Like you called me before. You, you, you showed me that miracle before. But it's, the miracle of the fish isn't even about the fish. It's been about Peter the whole time. Because Peter is like lost and broken and, and wandering and going back to his old life and trying the things he once did to try and feel fulfilled once again. And, and now he's sitting at the feet of Jesus going, I don't, even, I don't even know what's next. Have you ever been there before? I, I love this moment. Jesus is like, come on, bring this fish over here. Let's go. And then I like this part. Now come and have some breakfast. Got, you got to have food, which I don't know why the Bible has an exclamation, exclamation point there. Now come, have some breakfast. You're like, what if, it's a weird moment. Peter's got to be feeling something strange. Peter's lost, broken, and Jesus is like, eat something. Now, I would not want fish for breakfast, but that's just me. And Jesus said, Jesus said, none of the disciples dare to ask him, who are you? (laughs) They knew who it was. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. 
This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples. And since he had been raised, since he had been raised from the dead, after breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Now, theologians are split on what on earth Jesus is talking about right now. But I think based on the context and based on what you read in the scenario of Peter going back to his old life and now being restored by Jesus into the, the, the followership or the discipleship or the ministry. I think when Jesus is teaching the disciples and he looks at Peter and he says, do you love me more than these? I think he's talking about the boats and the fish and the 153 fish that they just caught. I think, he, I think he's looking at all of the old life over there and he says, Peter, do you love me more than that, you, the way you used to do things? Do, Peter, do you love me more than this, this? This had to be an enormous cash flow moment for him, right? Like this is the deal of a lifetime. This is like, if you were a real estate agent, this was like the big fish that you just landed and you're about, to, you're about to cash in. Do you love me more than this? Do, do you love me more than your old life? Do you, do you love me more than your comfort zone? Do, do, you, do you love me more than where you came from for the, the addictions that are calling you back? Do you, do you love me more than those people that were dragging you down and pulling you away from me? Do you, do you love me more than even your own past, the hurts and the hangups that keep trying to come back? Do you love me more than wallowing in the fact that that person hurt you and, you're, and you're, you can't forgive them? Do you love me more than that in your past? Do you, do you, do you love me more than these is what he's saying. Or would you rather have what you have? Do you guys get what Jesus is saying here? He's trying to pull him out of his old life. He's saying, do you love me more? Do you want to come out of that? Are you ready? Peter replies, yes, Lord. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. What's he telling him to do? Stop fishing. Start feeding. Stop, stop, going, stop your old life. Go to the life that I've always called you to. Don't, don't, you went back, don't go back. Keep doing what I called you to do. Then Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. He says, take care of my sheep. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? You notice how Jesus asks three times. But he doesn't ask Peter three times. He asks Simon three times. Simon was the name that Peter had when Jesus met him. And he said, from now on, I'm going to call you Peter, which means rock. I'm going to call you to a different life. I'm going to call you a different name. I'm going to call you. And Jesus, it, it, he went back to fishermen. So Jesus went back to his old name. Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter replied, I love you. Simon, son of John, do you love me? And how many times did Peter deny Jesus? And how many times did Jesus ask him? Around the fire that night where Peter denied Jesus, the third time the rooster crowed, and Jesus looked at him, and he knew in that moment that there was something broken. He was no longer Peter. He was Simon. And he disqualified himself. He stepped out of this discipleship. But here we are around another fire, another moment, where Jesus is looking at him another time. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And I think Jesus looks at all of us too. Do you, do you love me more than that? Then come on. Did, did that thing in your life that held you back, you coming with me or are you staying with that? Okay, come on. And he might, he might repeat himself several times. Because some of us, we denied him three times. Some of us, it's like a lot of times. <laughs> Whatever it is, he's going to keep calling you. He's going to keep calling you. He's going to keep calling you. 
then feed my sheep. I'm restoring you to the calling that I placed on your life at the very beginning, from the first time you met me. Come on. Luke 22, we're gonna flash back to before the cross. Before Jesus was arrested, and this is where we're gonna end. Luke 22, verse 31, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, when the Bible repeats something like that, it's like trying to garner or gain the attention. It's, it's, it's extra emphasis, like you've got to look at me. It's, a, it's the equivalent of you holding your kid's face still so you can look them in the eye, right? Like anybody else have kids like that? You're like, look at me, right? Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. And then this is, this is the line I want you to remember. So that when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. This is before he denies Jesus. This is before everything we just talked about. He says, when you repent and come back again, even though Peter had never left yet, Jesus knew it was gonna happen. He knew that the hardships and trials Peter was about to face. And Peter said, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you, even, even die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. Even before Peter denied Christ, walked away from relationship with Jesus, disqualified himself, chose himself to leave. Jesus had a plan for his redemption. He knew that Peter was coming back. He knew that he was going to call him and that Peter was going to respond. He knew that the work that he had through Peter was not done. And I think every person in this room, Jesus looks at you and has a plan for you too. I think he looks at you and he goes, I already knew that was going to happen. And I've got a plan for your redemption right now. I already knew that you'd wander. I already knew that you would deny. I already knew that you'd walk away. I already knew that you'd be over there doing that, those things. He goes, I've already got a plan in place to bring you back. And this room right now, this moment might just be a part of that plan. Have you ever walked away? Have you ever struggled? Have you ever separated yourself from God? He's got a plan to bring you back. He's got a plan to stay in relationship with you. So today, here's what I want to do. I want us to all come back. I've wondered, how about you? You ready to come home? You ready to give up fishing? I mean, not real fishing, like fun fishing. <laughs> Please, let's not get crazy. Are you ready to give up your old life? Are you ready to give up the unforgiveness that held you bound for so long? Amen. Are, you, are you ready to let him heal the, the deepest hurts in your heart? Are you, are you ready to surrender your sin and addiction and brokenness to him that he may bring freedom and healing into your life? That's redemption, isn't it? That's what we need. So the miracle of the fish, it's not about the fish. It never was. It's always been about Peter. And that context makes a huge difference, doesn't it? So today, let's take a moment now to pray. And we'll have time to reflect and, and, and worship and grow. But for right now, here's what I'd like to do. If you're in here today and you say, you know what, TJ, I, I have wandered, I have walked away, I have done those things. And if God really does have a plan for me, whether I believe it or not, of redemption, of new life, satisfaction and fulfillment and joy and forgiveness and freedom. If he really does have that plan for me, I'm in. I want it. I don't even know how it works, but I want it. If that's you, I want to pray with you right now. The Bible tells us that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that he is Lord, you will be saved. Today, that redemption is what the Bible calls salvation. 
and I'm ready to be redeemed by him. Amen? If that's you, I want you to pray a prayer with me right now. It's simple, short. What matters the most is you saying to him, yes, yes, I'm in. You pray like this, Father, today I surrender everything I am to you. There is freedom in you. There is life in you. And today, you always had that plan for me to come back. And so today, I'm following that plan. Today, I'm, I'm saying yes to the call you have on my life. I'm saying yes. Forgive me for wandering away. For, for, forgive me for denying you. For, forgive me for doing things my own way and living in my own strength. I don't want to do it anymore. Today, I surrender all, all to you. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Come on, put your hands together, people. Just pray that prayer. Yeah. And that's not just a prayer we have to pray one time. We can pray that all the time. God, I want to get back on the plan, back on the track with you. If you prayed that prayer with me today, do me a favor. Can you take your Connect card, fill it out, and on the bottom here it says, uh, I'm committing my life to Jesus. Mark that box. Let me know. I just want to send you an email with some next steps on how to take advantage of that. If you've never been baptized, you can write on there, I want to get baptized, or mark the box. Or no, there's no box, right? I don't know, whatever. Write it on the back. See, I can't read either. That's a tough thing about this. Um, and so baptism, we're here for you. We want to baptize. But next weekend is our baptism. Come on, somebody. If you know someone that got saved, yeah, come on. Woo! We're going to celebrate. It's going to be after service. It's going to be out there in the courtyard. It's going to be really cool. But in a moment, some buckets are going to go by. So fill this out. Put it in the bucket on the way by. And if you miss the bucket, there's a white box at our Welcome Center. You can put it in that white box, okay? It's also an opportunity for us to give. And uh, we, as a church, love to be generous. We love to see what God can do through our church. We've been able to do tens of thousands of dollars. We're, all, we're approaching $100,000 in giving since we opened up our church towards missions projects. Isn't that amazing? That's so cool. And so I'm just so pumped that God's doing some great things in this place through you. And so right now, uh, this opportunity for us to give. You can also give online at refresh.church. Um, so go ahead, serve team. You can pass those buckets out. Um, you can go online, refresh.church. There's two categories that we give to. Uh, tithe is what we call obedience. That's 10%. The word tithe means 10, a tenth. Um, then there's also our kingdom builders, which is where we do our missions projects, our building things, anything that we want to do that's above and beyond our 10%. That's what we call kingdom builders. And so we even have an opportunity fund for the hopeful day that we have our own facility. Amen? All right. And so I love this school. I think God's doing great things in this school, but I would like to have our own place full time. Amen? And so we've got that opportunity fund set up because we don't have a place to go yet, but we want to be ready. So that's why we call it our opportunity fund. So if you feel like called to be a part of that, that's our opportunity fund right there. All right. Um, so remember, baptisms next week. Camp is coming up. If you have students, send them to camp. If you want to sponsor a student, come on, talk to me. We'll make it happen, all right? So let's pray. And, and as the buckets go by, after it's done, we'll stand up. And we're going to reflect together on the, the sermon, the word, and we're going to worship him. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you that you are at work in this place. Thank you that your joy is contagious. Thank you that you're moving in this house. Thank you that everything we do can honor you. And I pray, Lord, that today, indeed, everything we do would. May we go into this world refreshing others as we are refreshed. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Come on, church, stand up with me. We got prayer partners on both sides over here. We got a cross down front. If you want to leave something at the cross today, write it down. Leave it. It doesn't need to leave here with you. Bless you guys. See you next week.
pray that you just consume us, completely consume us this week, Father. Thank you for being here today. We would love to continue in praise. We encourage you to stay. Praise, get prayer, sit in just with Jesus. And if you feel led to go, have a great week. Thank you guys for being here.